All right, come along as we explore the differences in the tail wheel aircraft between the three point and the wheel landing. Here I'm landing at Provo Airport in Utah, and you can see we have a nice low speed wheel landing, tail low, and then as we roll out and I push forward on the controls here, you can see it leveling, tail coming down now as we roll out to maintain authority as we lose rudder authority we bring the tail wheel down to make sure that we maintain contact with the ground and we maintain our stability there as we go ahead and taxi off so come along enjoy we're going to go through a bunch of different three-point landings to begin with on pavement and then we'll be doing some wheel landings and some uh, three-point landings as well on some dirt as well so you can see a little bit of the differences there um, and we'll get a better view too with the uh, full tail in view um, so you can see the elevator positioning and we'll talk through a little bit on the wheel and uh, three-point landings so one of the things we want to make sure that we think about as we talk about the differences between wheel landings and three-point landings is during the approach and landing phase, nothing is different between a wheel landing or a three-point landing. They're both going to have the same approach speeds. Um, they're both going to have the same basic flare and everything's going to change in that final seconds of the flare um, what I'm going to do with the aircraft through that and what I can do. Now a wheel landing does give us a little bit more options um, of landing at a higher airspeed and that's usually beneficial when there are say gusty winds or even a crosswind when I'm going to want rudder authority um, uh, to have more rudder authority earlier on in the landing. So we'll check. All right, so here we go. We've got about 20 minutes of film here. Oh, hang out with us as uh, we come in. Uh, this is a beautiful three-point landing the student's working on early in the day. This is the second day of his tail wheel training. You can see that flare starts out nice and smooth, rounds out, and we hold the pressure back. You can see once the aircraft touches down, um, it doesn't really change left or right, up and down. Um, he keeps the elevator back pressure on to hold that tail pin. And then we're gonna add power and start the go around here. So we come to a stop. As we like stop and goes in training, it helps the student to get more and more practice between takeoffs and landings, not just um, the initial touchdown, but the full completion of the landing all the way to the stop because as you slow down you lose rudder authority and it becomes really important to understand the full transition in the landing phase. You can see there he lifted the tail and the nose went left real hard with the gyroscopic precession and the P factor and all the left turning tendencies and we scooted off that center line real quick and he didn't cover for it. Um, here we come, next landing. These uh, first few are all going to be uh, three-point landings so we're looking at the flare in the landing phase He's gonna round out nice and low over the ground, letting the aircraft slowly start to settle towards the ground. If he has too much of a descent rate, we'll see a nice bounce when he hits. There's a little bit of a bounce there. You can see he had a bit of a descent rate. He could have rounded out a little smoother, let it come level a little bit longer down. And there we go. Um, you can see we're adding power. I'm talking him through, looking all the way to the end of the runway. As you can see, we swerved to the right this time. So because on the takeoff we had gone to the left with the P-factor, this time he overcompensated in the landing, and we went to the right um, with a little bit too much right rudder. So we're always looking for rudder and aileron to be correct. There's really no headwind, no crosswind whatsoever in this uh, nice early morning flight portion that we did here. So all of the landings were pretty well straight ahead. There really shouldn't have been any drifting left and right. Any of that was caused by pilot induced um, uh, errors. So either left turning tendency from the adverse aileron yaw or, uh, or the P factor and not correcting for it as he lifted the tail up. Uh, lifting the tail too early is an often cause of a poor takeoff, um, getting the air, tail airborne before you really fully have rudder authority. And there you can see a hard swing left, hard swing right, and you can see me uh, working hard to keep it straight as he uh, got crooked. And this one was all about aileron adverse yaw, so he started to drift left and right and it was using aileron inappropriately. Um, in this landing phase and that causes that nose to drift to the left and the right and in these Conventional geared aircraft and most of the older aircraft like this we don't have freeze type ailerons And so we produce a lot of drag on that outward wing. We also have really long wings usually 
um, especially in these Cessnas like this. So uh, we have a lot of adverse aileron yaw on those ailerons. So a little bit of aileron movement means a lot of nose movement left and right, which you'd think, oh, rudder is what c controls the nose movement left and right. And that's really not the case. We have uh, P-factor, torque, left turning tendencies, the ailerons with adverse aileron yaw left and right. Um, and so we really wanna make sure that we're not over controlling with the ailerons and we're providing that correct control and that we're coming in nice flare. You can see, that flare had a little bit too much um, um, downward momentum when he impacted the ground. What he needed to continue to do is continue the flare all the way through the stop. So many people in three point landing, they get into that flared position and they stop holding it off. So the phrase we always like to say as we're coming to land, especially with three point landings and wheel landings as well is hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off. And the whole time adding back pressure to that elevator to do just as we're saying we're trying to hold it off the runway um, and keep it from landing and so that what that gives us is the deepest flare all the way down to where we get that nice three-point landing both the main wheels and the tail wheel impacting the ground at the same instance and uh, keeping us um, on the ground in a full stalled configuration with that oh here we come again nice deep flare a little bit of forward pressure you can see his hand moving forward there and that causes a little bit of a hop there had he keep his kept his hand all the way back against the pressure we wouldn't have seen that little hop and it would have been a much better um, three-point landing so we're about ready to get through we've got a few more uh wheel landings i believe here um and then we'll we'll skip out over to um, some dirt. I always like teaching wheel landings first on dirt uh, as dirt's a little bit more forgiving um, than asphalt on being off directionally. And so when we don't have that tail wheel on the ground, oftentimes if we hit and we're not centered, um, we're gonna go left and right real hard and fast and that gets uh, a bit interesting. So I like to find some a nice dirt runway or a nice patch of the desert. So here we are, um, we just landed, we refueled a little bit there. Um, and come out. So this is a takeoff off of the little dirt section. Um, this is a little uh, airport in Nephi in Utah. They have a glider strip uh, that the gliders use that is just off to the, um, if you're taking off to the north, to the left of the runway there, as you can see the runway just off the distance there. Um, and we can use that. It's about 2000 feet of really, really good dirt and probably about 8,000 feet of, of bumpy dirt in between those sections there. So here we come in, I believe this is gonna be a wheel land, or a three-point landing again, um, as we're practicing what we've done. This is his first real on his own uh, landing in dirt. Um, so we're gonna see this, we can see, we didn't quite get the back pressure in all the way right on that landing again. He needs to flare a little deeper. Once again, continuing to hold it off, not bad in, in general. Did a good job, got it stopped, got the flap set to our takeoff settings. And then we're gonna go ahead and add power and start the takeoff roll again. Uh, once we're basically at a, at a near stop, uh, we don't have to come all the way to the stop to get the training, but we, uh, we definitely wanna get close to it. Um, so here we go, nice takeoff, tail wheel comes up. You can see he maintains directional control nicely. You can see his rudder moving left and right to keep us straight, but not a ton. Remember, as we go faster through the air, um, the rudder has more authority. And so we need less pressure on it. So we need to be using less pressure as we're getting faster and faster. And then more exaggerated control as we slow down as well through the stopping motion. So. Um, what worked half a second ago is either gonna be too much or not enough, depending on whether we're slowing down or speeding up um, with as regards to our rudder control. So we wanna be aware of that. Coming in, nice three-point landing again. Good three-point, you can see that tail wheel impacting the ground at the same time or a little bit before the mains um, do. Um, we can see it hops forward a little bit. And once again, um, trying to get the student to come all the way back on that elevator to hold and pin that tail wheel on the ground um, in these three-point landings there. So here we go, powering up, uh, getting ready for that tail to come up, maintaining directional control. He's doing a really good job. At this point, I'm not on the rudders on takeoff. I'm not on the ailerons on takeoff. I do put my hand just slightly there in the front just to make sure that I can grab 
anything that might happen. Um, always the mindful instructor to make sure that uh, any gust of wind or anything that he's not expecting, I can make sure that we can keep the plane safe. Uh, you can see a little hop on takeoff there. Uh, a little aggressive on the back pole uh, for the rotation. If we're a little bit more smooth, we won't get those hops in departure there. So if you, if you get a lot of hopping when you're taking off, and it's usually your, your uh, rotation is a little too aggressive, be a little more gentle on that uh, application of back pressure and you'll, your landings will be smoother. So here I am demonstrating a wheel landing for him. So here's the first one. We come in and uh, add forward pressure as we land. As you can see, we keep the tail wheel off the ground all the way through until we slow down. And then it's full back pressure braking to stop um, all the way to the stop position there. And I think we just get ready, yep, flaps out. And we're gonna go ahead and add power and get off and get going here. Um, you can see how we leveled the wing, um, pinning it forward to help to hold it on the ground, leveling that angle of attack. And really it's just doing kind of like what a tricycle gear does naturally when you land, is we're just trying to level the wing when we land. Uh, we don't need to go any further forward than that. If we do have a lot of wind and we want a lot of downforce, we can use the wing kind of like a Formula One wing and push the airplane onto the ground a little bit more, uh, make it so that we can really have good firm contact with our wheels so that uh, we can stay in contact there. And uh, nice tail lift and nice smooth application of the back pressure here. You can see that. And a little bit of a bounce, not quite as smooth as it could have been. All right, coming in, this is his first attempt at a wheel landing here. You'll see a little bit of how this is gonna go. It's not, not always as smooth as the hardest part here is with wheel landing, we really need to make sure our descent rate as the wheels come in contact with the ground is almost zero so that we don't bounce back up into the air um, to make sure we do. And he did a good job here. See, he bounced, came forward, and this is where we're converting into a three-point landing and, and doing exactly what we kind of expect everybody to do on their first wheel landing um, with a bounce and a hop. Um, Really, student's doing an awesome job at picking it up. Um, for his first wheel landing attempt, he did a good job. Um, we just wanna make sure that on the first bounce, we're recovering back into the wheel landing and we're not waiting for the third, fourth, fifth bounce before we're converting. Um, I let him kind of have those hops a little bit. They were safe. Uh, they weren't going to damage the plane. We weren't bouncing real, real high to be dangerous. Um, and I kind of wanted him to feel, see, first bounce let's start recovering and uh switching over to that three-point landing and that's what some of the things we want to see as an instructor um, when we're teaching tail wheel um, a failed wheel attempt it either needs to be a go around or converted into a three-point if you haven't bounced high enough and still have the energy to manage um, the landing at that point um, though oftentimes as in any flying go arounds are always uh, a great option uh, to save the landing here all right, coming in, here's our next attempt at a wheel landing, getting that nice level, power out, bounced a little bit, got forward on the stick a bit more that time. And you can see coming forward on that stick, leveling that wing, as you can see in the video, really holds the aircraft on the ground. As soon as we slow to where we're not flying anymore, we wanna get that back pressure, get that tail wheel on the ground, because remember, when we lose rudder authority as we slow down, we need that tail wheel on the ground to provide that tail wheel steering um, to help us uh, manage the aircraft on the ground so that we don't ground loop, run off the runway and cause other problems there. So we really wanna make sure we get a good transition from wheel to tail wheel um, as early as possible, but not too early and not too late either. It's always that fine finesse character. And that's what I love about tail wheel flying, especially teaching tail wheel. It's all about the fine finesse, uh, about managing the aircraft to a very small tight tolerance as we get ready to go. I love watching his takeoffs here. Um, and I do this video for all of my students so that uh, after each of our flights, we sit down and we debrief, kind of like we're debriefing here with you guys. Um, so this is kind of the you know end of your second or third lesson as we're starting to progress into wheel landings. Um, we've done a lot of air work at this point and we get to debrief. We get to spend some time on the ground going over um, what we're seeing to help you see um, how we're doing. Oh, so there's a nice bounce, right? So what do we need to be doing? Converting it, yeah, see there it is, the conversion into a three-point landing, right? Um, so good attempt at a wheel landing, but it bounced, so we go ahead and convert immediately into a three-point landing 
protect the airplane, keep it safe, and continue to fly. And you can see we stop here for a second to brief that, um, talk about it as we go. And I love these small, small town airports and dirt runways and things like this where we can spend a lot more time getting a lot more activity in. Um, as you can see, we um, this was a, uh, I think it was about a four hour day of flight that uh, we were able to do um, this day in about two two hour blocks here. And uh, we were able to finish up his tailwheel rating on this day as he was able to demonstrate um, five uh, three point landings um, to, to as good as I would expect a, a new tailwheel pilot to do. Uh, good crosswind controls, good wind corrections, and then uh, on the way back we actually got him. He had about nine gusting ten knots of crosswind there in Provo, um, and we did five laps in the pattern with that to finish off. To and he showed me he could manage and control the aircraft beautifully there. Um, that one you could see he came forward on the stick a little bit aggressively. Um, that was actually required in that landing because his descent rate was a little high, and so that forward pressure on the stick just killed the lift, killed the bounce, uh, kept the mains on the ground and was actually a really good wheel landing. Um, a bit, it wasn't smooth, it wasn't a, you know, the, the perfect greaser that we're looking for, but as far as safe and, and correct and appropriate for what had happened, it was absolutely perfect. Uh, anyway, here we go, taking off again, adding power, tail starts to fly, coming forward on the, pre on the stick a little bit, lift that tail a little higher, and then we're up to about 60, you start to add that back pressure and the rotation starts to happen there. We rotate smoothly off the ground, I love that. All right, next approach in. As we're coming along. Nice stable approach. Uh, looks like we've got two notches of flaps this time instead of the three. Um, that's fine, we can do that. Um, I think this is actually maybe me taking a turn, playing with a few things. So you can see that that's my my wheel landing there. You can tell my arm's not back around behind him, so you can see how just kind of re-demonstrating, showing what it can do. Oh, and then I'm adding power right away <laughs> as the tail dropped. Okay, um, what had happened is we actually had some skydivers in the pattern um, that were coming down and they had deployed and uh, they were getting a little lower uh, and I wanted to be on the downwind side further away giving them a little more room so I wanted to get through the pattern a little quicker that time so you can see arm up behind him he's definitely flying coming on in let's see how he does nice back pressure good level off there you can see he's nice and level slow descent rate nice and slow there he is oh Waited a little long on the forward pressure, but that's okay. There's a little bit of a hop. Got it in. Lifted the tail. The tail's ready to be down. He needs to come further back on that yoke again um, to pin that tail on the ground. We shouldn't see that tail will come off the ground once he first places it on the ground. Any hop or anything like that in it. Uh, he's already added power. We're going around again. But um, any hops like that um, are a potential for a gust of wind to push you and to weather vane you. Um, into the wind and, and to cause a loss of control. So we really want to watch that and be aware of that Making sure that on those landings when that tail comes down We come all the way down all the way back with the yoke pin that tail on the ground So we've got good directional control using the rudder and the tail was steering um, with that. So here we come in Nice and smooth. Oh, yeah, look at that beautiful wheel landing. That was a good one That was a really good one. That was his best one yet back pressure on the tail a little bit more back pressure see how he's still kind of neutral i would really like to see a lot more elevator up elevator you should be able to see all the way elevator in that um once again it's just going to help um if he ever does get hit with a gust of wind um while he's doing um those landings in the wheel and this is why we we review the footage we review the game footage after every flight with our students to make sure that they see what we're seeing so they can understand and when you can see from the outside the cockpit, it helps a bit. And we also have a, another one inside the cockpit looking forward, trying to show that directional drift as they uh, are drifting left and right. And maybe if they're over controlling with the ailerons, which most students are doing um, that we're seeing these days, um, they're adding way too much aileron. And uh, instead of using rudder to keep the heading and the nose where it's supposed to be, they're trying to drive it on. And you really can't do that with the, 
with these types of aircraft is the nose is going to swing erratically and you're going to be uncontrollable at that point. Here we're coming back over to pavement. And that's the other thing I like about this runway is we can go asphalt. Nice three point landing. Look at that. Both touch down simultaneously. Great control, great rollout. Just absolutely beautiful. Um, camera unfortunately died after um, the next couple little runs here. Um, but basically what we did for the next hour after this was we were doing landings. Um, we do asphalt and then dirt and then asphalt and then dirt and then I'd have him do a wheel landing and then a three point and I'd switch between the wheel and landing and three point between asphalt and dirt um, to make sure that he was competent and, and capable of handling the aircraft on both asphalt and dirt. Um, always be leery if you, you only fly in grass or dirt um, um, with a tailwheel and it's your first time to an asphalt airport. Um, as the asphalt grabs those tires way, way more. And so if you land with any side drift on asphalt, you're likely to start to head into that ground loop. Whereas if you land a little sideways on dirt, it'll let you slide a little bit before the weight comes onto those wheels and let you straighten out and give you time to straighten out. And that's why I love training on dirt. It gives you a little bit more time to recover before I have to jump on the controls and fix things. Whereas on the asphalt, I have to be on a little bit more. You can see, at this point, Joseph's doing a great job um, on his on his flying, on his on his training here. And I just wanted to bring you guys along for a little bit of a training day. The difference between wheel landings and three-point landings, as you can see, uh, and what he does. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I know it's probably way too long, but uh, if you're you're really looking to see those minute uh, differences in tail wheel versus wheel landing and three-point landings, um, it can be helpful to record yourself like this and uh, go ahead and critique yourself. See how you're doing. Um, see how the video looks. Um, as you can see, um, it's a great help, great tool. Definitely use all the resources you can to uh, help you train. Anyways, catch you guys next time. Like and subscribe, all that jazz, and uh, hope to see you in the pattern.